I call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. Uh, first up, we have messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board this evening? Next is petitions and remonstrances. And first, under petitions and remonstrances is appeal of notice of violation number 51567 at 4224 East Penn Court. Hi, good afternoon, Daniel Dixon, City Legal Department. Um, I have a different ticket number. Do you have 51369? Oh, um, yeah, on my report, I have 51369, so maybe it's just an agenda. Is the ticket number. Um, yep, I'm sorry, so that should be 51567 is the correct ticket number. You are correct. Okay. And I would just note that my staff report has the incorrect number in it. Okay, so uh, with that being said, this is an appeal uh, from Mark Harper, uh, 4224 East Penn Court related to a citation that he received for um, overgrowth, uh, specifically for uh, invasive species, noxious weeds uh, in violation of both our local city code, but also in the state invasive plant list. We were here, I believe, July 5th um, with Mr. Harper on an appeal at that time, just a warning. Um, for the same violations uh, at that time, the board uh, denied the appeal and upheld the warning, which is why we're at the process now of issuing a, a ticket with a fine. Um, so the appeal tonight um, is now related to a, a ticket with a fine. Um, from the city's perspective, it's the same violation. I'm just having a little bit Sorry, of it's the, <laughs> I'm not used to, to talking in a mask for a while. Um, how far back would you like me to go? Okay. Uh, so this is uh, 4224 East Penn Court. Um, this was previously before the board on July 5th of this year for um, essentially the exact same violation, um, overgrowth and noxious weeds. Um, there's a specific uh, weed on this plant or on this property that is both uh, against local code but also the Indiana State Invasive Species List. Um, so listed in two places that says you're not allowed to have it. Um, it's been identified as growing on this property. And so um, when this was before the board on July 5th, we asked the board to deny the appeal of the warning at that time. Um, it's now, um, because the warning was upheld, it's progressed to the level of a fine, a $50 fine. Um, it's the, the same violation. Um, the law still supports the, the notice of violation. And we'd ask that you uh, deny the appeal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have the appellant present? If you go under live transcript. No. Okay. I was waiting for the new picture. Let me print off the staff. If you have the staff report, please. Are those not working? Uh, hold on. This is what Mr. Dixon presented, and we'll, come, we'll circle back. What's that? Do you want me to review that? Read you that? might yeah, see if you can make them a little bit bigger. I don't see them. Second here. Go ahead. I don't need the meeting. Oh, this is nice. All right. Well. So it's doing the transcript, right? But not. The um, I think you'll need to scroll like all the way down the bottom. It's not reading your block there. You need to scroll all, all the way. Oh, see that? You know, see that bar on the right? That gray bar on the right hand side? Nope. Go down. Go up. <laughs> this <laughs> bar? Drive right. This yes. Side. This yeah. bar right drive here. All go the all the way down. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. That's a long way to go. Yeah. yeah. That's me talking. Yes. However, it should have given me transcript. Yeah, there should be a closed caption um, 
uh, at the bottom of the screen available too. Well, it's on the bottom of my um, screen. I don't know what. If you go to live transcript, if you can click on that live transcript button, show subtitles. E, try that. There, there we, we go. go. Now, Thanks, can Daniel. you go back? Sorry, April. Can you go back into the settings and see if you can make them a little bit bigger? Um, there was an option to like make the font bigger um, in the settings, I think. And maybe it just affects the side transcript, but I was going to say if it makes it a little bigger on the screen, that might be um, easier. So if you click on that probably, live, uh, if you, the yeah, the live transcript button. Mm -hmm. And then move that font size from small to um, the larger side. How's that? Maybe just a touch bigger, just so they can be seen from a distance. I'll just, there we go. Yep, there that's we go. good. I, just, I think that's working. Yep. If you could, um, so Mr. Dix, if you could read the. As thank, I, you, yeah. that, thank you so much. Mr. Dixon, Okay. can you read, read the subtitles as I talk? Mr. Dixon can has presented the, the city's position that your lawn is out of compliance with, both, with local code and that this is a, you are appealing the fine that has been issued by the city and the city is asking the board to uphold the fine. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. It's now your option to um, speak to the board on why you would like the fine appealed. Yes, I would like to. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Supreme Court Justice once said, I can't tell you what pornography is, but I know it when I see it. I can't tell you what discrimination is, but I know it when I feel it. Uh, Approximately a billion and a half miles ago, my home was totaled in a fire and I lost my two cats. And um, they had both been fed since kittens on one of the five pianos I have in my house. So they both, mama and a daughter, the daughter was bigger and long hair and white and the mother was short, dark haired, just complete opposites and they would play on one piano together, and I have it on YouTube if you'd like to see it. I'm getting goosebumps and chills as I speak this because I don't, I'm not reading from a script. But uh, um, I'm sure anybody that has pets, you know it's like a child. So it's been three times around the sun that I'm finally getting centered enough, accepting the loss of my life, that I can start bawling over right now, but I can't. So, I'm a druid at heart. I worship photosynthesis, oxygen, sunlight. It was hard for me to come back and deal with my uh, lawn properly, which is gonna be, like some of my neighbors, completely filled with echinacea. It's just gonna be plants, plants, plants. I work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, so my time was limited. When I got this ticket, I had already started picking this weed that had been, the name of it, didn't know it, thank you for enlightening me, Chinese bush clover, appropriate in these times with the Pelosi in uh, Taiwan. Um, if the weed enforcer could have at least put a drawn, you know, uh, given me a, photo of the weed, that would have been helpful. Because as soon as I got the warning, I started going out there and picking. There's one plant that's kind of taken over, but it's a good plant. Uh, so I, I have proof of the weeds that I was weeding, and then very shortly I got the fine. That's why I got a little upset and said, this isn't fair because since I worked so much, I didn't have time to uh, you know, uh, do the weeding because I don't like polluting the air and I also don't like the eight inch rule because it prevents certain flowers from uh, flowering and then that helps the bees. So I just think the eight inch rule is ridiculous, but hey, you gotta go with what it is. But really the main thing here, you know, I lost my pets and then last year, 
I think via Duke Energy and the city and uh, Townsend uh, Lawn uh, business, uh, Company, they came down and didn't chop back the branches in the wires. They chopped my whole tree down. I came home, I couldn't believe it. Are you kidding me? I could understand cutting back the branches from the wires, but to cut my whole tree down that I watched grow as my kids grew, I was devastated. I even called Ken Nunn. Sorry, we only deal with uh, animals, not vegetables. Uh -huh. So, and then I forgot to mention, I had an Italian greyhound that could fetch $100 I'd keep a $100 bill in my pocket. I went, you know, they uh, took him to the vet, and uh, they popped his salivary gland, the Blue Sky vet. And so they paid thousands, like three, $5,000 to get it fixed up in Indianapolis. I lost my dog. I don't know if you know about Italian Greyhound, most wonderful dogs. Oh. Mr. Harper. And so uh, anyway, if I have to pay this fine, I wish I would have learned a long time ago, choose your battles. If I had learned that a long time ago, I'd like to be a, I would think I could have been a lawyer. My dad is a fantastic lawyer. I'm choosing this battle, and if I have to pay the fine, I'll pay it, but then I'm going to take it to the circuit court. Thank right. you. Thank you. And I could go on, because I'm a musician, I'm an entertainer, I'm a sculptor. Some of my neighbors don't like my art in my front yard. But anyway, they got a neck. They don't have to look at it. Are we done? Thank you. Thank you. you. Questions from the board? Is it the case that the lawn is still eight inches? I'm going to defer. <laughs> okay. I have, I have, my name's Joe Stong. I'm a, one of the compliance officers for HAND. Um, I have not been out there in a few days the last time I was out. I took photos. Uh, he has not cut anything, and he has put up what he had up before was black fencing around it to try to block the view of that, but he hasn't cut anything, so he's, not, he's still not in compliance. Okay. Thank you. And have you had any direct conversation with uh, Mr. Harper about the his yard and not for a while, except when he came in to appeal, and I talked to him at that time. I guess I have one more question: Is it common practice um, to leave any information about the weed that's in question, like a photograph, like was mentioned, or simply the name? Uh, we typically we we can write the name of the um, plant in the notes. I think what I wrote was uh, the plants in the yard are invasive um, on the on the ticket. Uh, we don't we take it we take pictures for our for this <laughs> and for our own files, but we don't typically leave a photo at the residence or anything. Um, has there been an opportunity yet for anyone from uh, hand to talk with um, Mr. Harper about like some proactive ways to create a um, permaculture environment that would be suitable for this property as opposed to something invasive? We have not talked with him about that. He has not sounded like he was interested in that. He simply was telling me he wanted to appeal it. It had a beautiful flower, and he wanted to keep it, and he didn't want to cut it. So if he's interested in that, I'm happy to talk to him about it, and I, lo I know Linda Thompson would too. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? Any um, public comment on this item from any members of the public? No. 
spoken. Seeing none, is there a motion on this item? I move that we uphold the notice of violation 51569 at 4224 East Penn Court and deny the appeal. Second. And just for clarification on the um, violation number, I think we, is 51569 five, is correct. 51569, okay, and that's what you had said. 51567. 51567. The agenda is correct, agenda yes. Is correct. So if you'll just, so that's just to note that that's the violation we're referring to. Yes, I'm referring to the notice violation 51567. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we have appeal notice of violation number 51601 at 1219 South Stoll Avenue. Would you like to go first? Can she text oh, me um, information on uh, five one, uh, that Yeah, there is. I, you're, you're welcome to go first and talk to the board. I was going to just present what the city was going to say first, and then you can well, Okay, you go ahead. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah. Yeah, just stay right there because we'll. Yep. Mm -hmm. You'll be right next, okay. All right, hello again. Um, we are here now for uh, another appeal, uh, this time on ticket. Oh, sorry, mask, I'm not used to it. <laughs> um, notice of appeal 51601. Uh, this is at 1219 South Stoll Avenue. Um, it is for excessive growth of grass and weeds. Um, there are a few photographs in the packet um, showing uh, the height of the grass and other plants there on the property that are in need of mowing um, have not been mowed. And so uh, pursuant to Title VI of the Bloomington Municipal Code, the uh, city believes that this uh, warning, uh, not a ticket yet, but a warning, uh, was appropriately issued and would ask that the board uphold the warning. And I will defer to Mr. Searle. Thank you. Yes, I've, uh, I've cleared out the uh, weeds in my... Can you state your name for the record and talk closely into the microphone, please? My name is Duncan Searle. And uh, I had a notice of violation a while back. Um, and I've uh, cut, I've removed the, I don't know what kind of weeds they were, but it wasn't grass. Um, and, uh, but I have tall grass, and I think this thing about eight inch tall, you might want to initiate a fine for if you mow something that's not at least eight inches tall. I mean, because with this prohibition thing, um, people have, um, want to avoid these anonymous denunciations, so they turn their responsibility over to these uh, lawn care operators. So if there's a complaint, it goes to them. And these guys are just riding around on, on riding mowers on just really little yards. And it's just tremendous carbon dioxide and, and noise pollution that this is causing, you know. So, uh, and like I say, I had some non-grass uh, unknown weeds it took me like almost the full seven days before I got them out of there. And maybe the compliance man came back before I had done that and he saw that it was still kind of overgrown. And so that might have been why uh, the uh, appeal failed or, or I don't know exactly what the problem is. But um, so I'm just uh, applying for, see if I can get a designation of a, a, a meadow status. So. I, I see a lot of these neighbors have just growing up, and uh, so is, is that possible to? Um, so one of the questions I'd asked with the previous um, K 
case was uh, about um, a conversation about permaculture um, landscaping, which there are certain plants that can be grown in yards that um, don't require to be mowed, um, so you can conserve uh, the, um, I, the I've got the burdock CO2. and pokeweed and um, um, I keep forgetting the name of these uh, plants. Uh, the one that's tall and has a yellow tall flower on top. Uh, goldenrod, I think it is. Uh, yeah, goldenrod. There's gold on top of this tall plant. And so are any of those uh, considered so, noxious? Uh, my name's Adam Wason. I'm the Public Works Director. Um, I know April had had a conversation with you about talking with Linda Thompson in our uh, planning department who helps yeah. residents. Uh, understand what some of the guidelines are for the native plants that can go into um, these areas and not require mowing. Um, we'd like to help facilitate that conversation and we'll continue to try to do that over the next several days. Um, what what your, what the appeal right now that you're uh, filing is for a warning. We have not issued any fines yet. Um, and we would like you to work, we will help um, facilitate that conversation with Linda. The one thing about the ordinance, the, the, the city code that uh, staff is enforcing here is city code that's um, approved by the city council and then staff is directed to enforce that city code. Um, and it lists all kinds of different invasive species and, and why, you know, and that the, the lawn needs to be maintained at eight inches or less. So uh, the Board of Public Works is here to then um, hear the appeal, but is also required to uphold the city code. Um, so what we'd like to do tonight, if... Well, I thought the city code allowed for a meadow status to be... They do, it, it does, but I, it needs I to heard, be done in a specific I way. I heard that the specific way that it's, the specific way that it should be done is that you apply for it before you get a notice of violation. And since I came in on the very day of my getting the notification, they said that they would just bump it back. And at least this is the impression I had. Okay. And that they would grant me that status. And we'll certainly try to facilitate that conversation with Linda over the next few days. It doesn't yeah. mean that you might not need to take care of the, the, um, the lawn to come into compliance with city code. Oh, you've got a picture of my yard. Yes. That's the overgrowth in which the yeah. uh, staff has issued the warning for. And when was this taken? I this was probably two weeks ago. Oh, it's been a couple weeks already. Well, I don't see those plants that I cut out. So is it okay with legal and hand staff if we table this for tonight and then get Linda Thompson uh, in to talk with Mr. Searle? We'll facilitate, so uh, if it pleases the board, if you could table this for the evening, we'll facilitate a, com for a conversation with Mr. Searle and Linda Thompson and, and see where we can get with that. Okay, and then um, the hand department will hold on that conversation before any other n notices yes. of violation are yes. issued? Okay. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I've got her number, but I'm not sure if I've talked to We'll make to sure her to yet. get you in touch. We'll, we'll, April and I will work to get in touch with her for you, okay? Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank if you. If it pleases the board. Um, before we go to uh, a motion, just wanted to check in to see if there was any public comment on this specific item um, before we would call for that. All right. Is there a motion from the board? I move that we table conversation about the notice of violation 51601 at 1219 South Stull Avenue. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up, we have Title VI Enforcement Abatement at 1209 West 11th Street. My name is Chastina Hayes and I work for the hand department and 1209 West 11th is for the overgrowth of grass. We had an abatement on it and it expired I believe last month. So it's just basically redoing it because they don't want to mow the yard. This is a location that we um, have had a long history with the board um, uh, last year and beyond. Um, so um, again, this is just a request for extension of the abatement. 
you were at the property or that uh, this week okay and it's still in the same condition no it still hasn't been mowed thank you and have you had any conversation with the owner or the representative of the estate the only conversation I've had is was was with the son of the deceased and he basically called in and said that the woman that actually owns it won't let him mow and he's having an issue with that but that's the only conversation I've had okay thank you is there an order to seal on this property as well I was thinking that there we, we also had that order there's an order to remove the structure that's still in place on the property okay um, We've, we've held on enforcement of that order for the time being because the estate is attempting to sell the property and if a new owner comes in and purchases it subject to that order, it would be their responsibility to either remove it or if, if they wanted to put the money into repairing it, they could, but it would be a lot more expensive that way. So we're, we've kind of held off to see if somebody else will, will pay to have that done before we would move to enforce it. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions on this item? Is the property owner present or wish to make any remarks? I do not see the property owner. If there is anybody on Zoom that would like to make a comment, please either raise your hand or use the chat function. I don't see anything coming through. No. Uh, is there any other public comment um, on this item? I see none. Okay. Is there a motion from the board? I move that we continue the abatement at 1209 West 11th Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up, we have the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda, we have approval of minutes for July 19th of 2022. We have resolution 2022-36, Pride Fest. Resolution 2022-52, Hoosiers Outrun Cancer. Resolution 2022-56, Lotus. Resolution 2022-57, Harvest Hootenanny. Resolution 2022-58, B-Town Neighboring Project Fall Welcome Event. Noise permit for urban fabric uh, for ribbon cutting ceremony for art installation at 4th Street Garage. Noise permit for Gold Coast Neighborhood Potluck. Resolution 2022-55, renew mobile vendor and public right of way for the Big Cheese. Resolution 2022-41, declaration of surplus from parking services. 2022 service agreement with Thrasher Landscaping and approval of payroll. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? Uh, Kyla, I'd ask that uh, the agenda item for Lotus Resolution 2022-56 uh, be removed from the consent agenda and added to new business for further discussion. Thank you. Any other items that need to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay. Is there a, a motion from the board to move uh, item number four, resolution 2022-56, Lotus, to new business? I move that we move resolution 2022-56, Lotus, from the consent agenda to new business this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, under the consent agenda, is there a motion to approve the remaining items in the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda for tonight's meeting, August 2nd, 2022. Second. Any public comment on the consent agenda? I see none on Zoom. Okay. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, we have new business. Uh, first under new business is resolution 2022-56, Lotus. All right, Adam Wason, Public Works Director, City of Bloomington. Um, after receiving some additional feedback from the, after the work session yesterday, um, we have asked that the uh, Lotus um, agenda item be moved to new business for some further discussion. Um, it was brought to our attention that a um, local resident would like uh, the board to consider not allowing uh, Lotus to um, 
perform or have their uh, concerts until 12 midnight on Friday and Saturday, September 23rd and 24th. Um, after further internal discussion with city staff and uh, the administration, we still do support the um, uh, festival going till midnight for those evenings, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, overall, the request from Lotus includes um, street closures on 6th Street, on Kirkwood Avenue, uh, some of the connecting alleys there, um, as well as a Saturday evening parade route that will use Washington Street South um, and from 6th Street down to 4th Street, which has been coordinated with both the um, Bloomington Police Department and the Sheriff's Department for uh, some additional security features with the, um, with the parade. Um, <clears throat> so uh, at this time, we do ask that the board does approve the uh, Lotus request as um, presented and would be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, Adam, you shared with us the um, letter from the resident. So um, I think hopefully all of us had an opportunity to review that as well. Um, uh, one note in that request, it, it was requested that the board consider making a stipulation that the 2023 festival would not um, pass 10 p.m. Um, with the acknowledgement that the 2022 festival was likely already scheduled um, with that timing in mind. Staff is not making any recommendations on any modifications for 2023 at this time. Happy to engage in additional discussions with the event organizers, however. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? No. For some similar events like Pride Fest or maybe Grand Falloon that have large scale musical acts, how are those permits handled either the same or differently from this for Lotus um, and what the requirements are for their end time for concerts? Uh, those have been individual discussions with each. Uh, they've chosen earlier start times voluntarily. Lotus okay. has traditionally for the last, uh, according to their staff, for the last 20 years gone until midnight on uh, the Friday and Saturday night concerts downtown. Okay, so the other the other events have selected to stop at 10 p.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think Pride may go, to, uh, was Pride it, it goes 11. later. Yeah. yeah, in fact, I, Pride so to my memory, um, there, are, there are now four events, there were three, but Grand Falloon joined the set. So we now have four events that the city uh, has authorized to go until somewhere in the neighborhood of midnight. It's usually between 11.30 and midnight in some fashion. And you can correct me if I'm mistaken. Those events include the Taste of Bloomington, Pride Fest, Grand Falloon, and Lotus. Correct. Um, I did notice that the uh, Harvest Hoot Nanny goes right up until 11, 11, so they have an extended period past the 10 p.m. Um, cutoff, but they are not, uh, to my memory, as late as the, those four that have been authorized um, for that time. Two of those events take place on Kirkwood, so Pride Fest and Grand Falloon. Uh, Taste of Bloomington traditionally takes place here City. outside of this facility at City Hall. Um, and then Lotus takes place uh, in multiple locations downtown, primarily between 4th and 6th Street Correct. in the downtown Correct. corridor, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> other questions? Have we received any other um, noise specific? Uh, comments about Lotus or uh, one of those other four in the, this recent year that we've been hosting them? We have not. <clears throat> no. Um, Grand Falloon was just, what, three, four weeks ago? No, shoot. Mid-June. Uh, we didn't have any, um, no complaints, no, uh, no one brought that concert to our attention as far as uh, noise volumes or complaints about that. Uh, Taste of Bloomington, unfortunately, was canceled this year. Um, and then Pride Fest will be uh, early September. Coming up, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, are there public comments on this item? Mm 
board members, thanks for the opportunity to address you. Uh, thanks to uh, Public Works Director Adam Wason for suggesting that the item be pulled off of the consent agenda. I appreciate that. Um, yes. Bring the mic a little closer to your mouth, please. And if you can just up. state your name Thank for the record. You. I was getting to my name. Um, my name is Dave Askins. I'm a downtown Bloomington resident. I rent an apartment above what is now called uh, Metalworks Brewing Company, formerly Function Brewing. It's about a half block east of the Courthouse Square. Uh, so the uh, 6th Street Festival tent for Lotus has a dramatically negative impact on the quality of my life for all of the hours of its operation, but especially after 10 o'clock at night. Um, I appreciate President Cox Decker's clarification of what my request actually is. It's to approve the application this year, but with the condition that next year's application end the performances at 10 o'clock. I mean, I think a year is plenty of time to, uh, to make those arrangements. So uh, this is not the first time I've made this request. Three years ago, uh, September 27th, 2019, it was four minutes until midnight, and I was writing an email to the executive director of the Lotus Festival instead of sleeping or working. Uh, and what I asked in that email was for future consideration of a 10 o'clock stop time for the festival music. Uh, and at the time that I was writing that email message, I was listening to noise that I had measured, and granted, I downloaded one of those stupid little apps that you can download from the internet onto your smartphone. Uh, so it's not like it has scientific accuracy, but uh, it was the best I could do in that situation. I measured that noise at 110 decibels. So when you compare Lotus Festival to some of the other festivals that you mentioned. Um, Lotus Festival has a kind of, I don't know, weird pride in the loudness of their music. Uh, so I don't think the, the noise levels of Lotus, Lotus Festival are comparable to the other three festivals. Um, so I, I hope you're familiar enough with decibel scales to understand that 110 decibels is really loud. Um, anyway, I, in 2019, I didn't receive a reply from Lotus Festival. In 2020, there was no festival because of the pandemic. Last year, uh, I remonstrated against the Lotus application um, for their noise ordinance waiver because, you know, objectively measured, their application was, uh, was incomplete in several uh, substantial ways. So I didn't receive a reply to that remonstrance, so that's why I'm here today uh, in person, so that I am unavoidable. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think that we can agree that what I'm asking for is reasonable. Now, I'm not trying to argue that just because it's reasonable that you have to somehow uh, approve the request, but I don't think there's any dispute that what I'm asking for is reasonable. I'm asking that you approve the application this year. So that's surely reasonable. And I'm asking that you tie that to uh, a condition for next year. Uh, I don't know, I just think that that's a, a reasonable request. And that would be a good starting point to acknowledge that yes, what I'm proposing is reasonable, it's not crazy. And I don't appreciate, you know, when this request of mine is portrayed as somehow weird and an outlier and crazy, it's, I think, perfectly reasonable. Um, in any case, you know, I, I hope if the board is not willing to place a condition on the approval today, then I would hope that the board would at least try to get an answer to this question. Why is playing loud music past 10 o'clock so important to the success of the Lotus Festival? Why? Is there a case to be made? I mean, maybe there is a persuasive case to be made. I don't know, I haven't heard it, I can't imagine it. I don't think there is one. But I would like to hear an answer to that question. And, you know, let's be clear, I support the Lotus Festival, we all do. 
every resident of Bloomington supports the Lotus Festival. And the reason I say that is that what you're considering today has a cash dollar value attached to it for the value of the services that are provided at no charge. So what is that amount, if you had to evaluate that? What do you think it is? I mean, I'm gonna tell you, but <laughs> um, it's an interesting thing to noodle through. How much do you think that it's worth? What Lotus is getting through your action today? Is it $5,000? 10 times that? $50,000, somewhere in between? Well, Lotus itself pegs that number at $130,000. Every year, $130,000. That's from their IRS 990, that where they have to fill in the blank. How much do you get from local government for services that, uh, uh, for which there's no charge? So over the last eight years, that's a million dollars. That's a lot of support that we give to Lotus. And I think that in light of that support, you know, we, we're allowed to ask the question that I want an answer to, which is, why is it so important to the success of the festival that very loud music be played after 10 o'clock? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you so much for your service on the board, and thank you for considering my request. Thank you. Questions from the board? No. None. Okay. <clears throat> I think that um, n no, this this concept and request is not unreasonable. Um, and I also think that um, because we do uh, uphold these, what I would consider to be four premier special events that happen in the city. Um, there, is, there is a quality across all of these festivals that do take them late into the evening. Um, and we do acknowledge that it is a, um, sort of a special um, accommodation for this particular type of festival that draws in Lots of people from around the area, you know, well beyond Bloomington. Um, you know, as Bloomingtonians, we manage a lot of um, special event obligations. Much come from the university. Uh, these these four festivals, um, uh, you know, in my mind, are uh, sort of crowning festivals of our community that um, are a little bit different from day-to-day uh, -day events that we might have. Um, I think that it is fair uh, to find out from Lotus, you know, w the, the reasons that they feel that they um, need to program the way that they do. Uh, and I think that we can certainly uh, follow up with them to get that response uh, so that we do have a better understanding of what that looks like and what the other possibilities might be in the future. So I, you know, as, as a board member, I would support having that conversation with Lotus to find out uh, a little bit more about that because I can only speculate what that answer is based on the other festivals and some of their reasonings for um, going into uh, the later evening hours as the fact that Lotus is also uh, following some of those patterns because we have had those conversations related to Taste of Bloomington and some of these other events um, as to why they go uh, past the 10 p.m. Um, time mark. So. Uh, I, of course, would be supportive of those ongoing conversations to learn a little bit more um, about that. For Staff will be happy to facilitate those. Okay. All right. Is there any other public comment on this item? If you would like to make a comment, please either raise your hand or leave a chat. I see none. Thank you. Is there a motion from the board on this item? I move that we approve resolution 
2022-56 about Lotus with appreciation to Mr. Askins for bringing this to our attention and certainly encouraging ongoing conversations. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up under new business is resolution 2022-59, change order number one with hair construction for repair of unsafe structure at 410 South Highland Avenue. Sorry, and of course, as soon as I stand up, my computer shuts off, so hold on. Okay, um, so this is a follow-up to a unsafe order um, that was issued by hand at 410 South Highland. Um, it was an order to repair a failing structure, a residential structure. Um, hand previously came to the board uh, back in um, June uh, to approve a contract with hair construction to uh, conduct work on the foundation and floor system of this property uh, in light of the owner's failure to complete that work. Um, as sometimes happens, once your contractor gets in and starts uh, conducting demolition and um, getting inside the walls and those sorts of things, you discover new problems um, that also need to be addressed in order to um, successfully make the repairs and stabilize the structure. Um, that's what happened in this case. Um, uh, Hare came back with a proposed change order, which is reflected uh, in the change order one um, in those four bullet point items. Um, which is the right-hand wall from Street View, install six vertical support beams. At the left-hand wall from Street View, install three vertical support beams, uh, tie below grade into footer, and tie into substructure with blocking and shears. Um, so those are things that the contractor uh, has identified that need to be done to uh, successfully make this a safe structure again and in compliance with uh, Indiana Code uh, on safe law. So uh, happy to answer any questions. And uh, Mike Arnold as well is here from hand and has a bit more of a technical uh, knowledge about this stuff, so. Thank you. I've got a question. It's not about this contract so much as generally speaking. Um, where do you draw the line between uh, trying to repair an unsafe structure? And this, I mean, this sounds like it's kind of falling in on itself. Um, at, at what point do you draw the line in, uh, between repairing it and then just doing an order to remove? Typically when the, uh, and Mike jump in if I get this wrong, it's when the, the cost of uh, repair or, or replacement of this, uh, I guess cost of repair of the structure um, exceeds the cost of removal and replacement. So you've got to get a pretty significant repair bill or have a very, very bad structure um, or low value structure to kind of tip the scales that way in doing it. Um, this particular structure is also, I believe, located in a historic district, um, which has other complicating issues, especially if you want to attempt to remove a building in a historic district, you then also need the Historic Preservation Commission to weigh in and sign off on what's happening. So um, we are kind of also being mindful of, of the cost affiliated with that, and there are certain things that increase the cost of this project because we have to do in-kind or like replacements in order to not have to go back and, and get a modification approval from, from HPC. Thank you. Other questions on this item? Uh, are there any public comments on this item? I see none on Zoom. Is there a motion from the board? I move that we approve resolution 2022-59, change order number one with hair construction for repair of unsafe structure at 410 South Highland Avenue. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next up is street closure request from Renaissance Inc. on West First Street from August 10th, 2022 through August 23rd, 2022. Hi, this is Emily Herr with Engineering. Renaissance Inc. will be completing the demolition of Indiana University Legacy Hospital site. To complete the first phase of their work in the right-of-way, Renaissance is proposing to close a portion of West First Street and the pedestrian sidewalk located along the south side of West First Street from South Rogers East to approximately Fairview Street from Wednesday, August 10th, 2022 at 8 a.m. 
through Tuesday, August 23rd at 4 p.m. They're requesting to work weekdays from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the overhead utility removal. Additionally, Renison is requesting a flagging operation in order to restripe a turn lane on South Rogers Street that previously led to the East Hospital entrance, which would help reduce confusion for motorists. Renison has notified nearby property owners about the closure request and has sent a second notification clarifying revised dates. I'm happy to answer any questions. Chad Hamill with Renison is available on the call to answer questions, as well as Steve Winters from DLZ. Thank you. Questions on this item? I don't have any. Uh, for the sidewalk closure, um, is the sidewalk detour like down the block and on like a neighboring street? Yes, the sidewalk detour will use Wiley and Fairview. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a sidewalk on the north side of the road um, to use, so yes, we had to detour pedestrians down a block. Okay. Any um, public comment on this item? I see none on Zoom. Seeing none, is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve the street closure request from Redison Inc. on West First Street from August 10, 2022 to August 23, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next up is street closure request from Renison Inc. on North Dunn Street and North Grant Street. Good evening. Paul Kerber with Engineering. Um, Renaissance Inc. has been contracted with Indiana University to demolish the Poplars Building at 407th Street. Um, at the July 19th meeting, uh, you heard their previous request. And since that time, Renaissance has reviewed and now changed their demolition strategy. Um, they're requesting the closures to be 24 hours a day instead of opening it up overnight. Um, the first street closure has a full closure on North Dunn from 7th to the east-west alley just south of their site. Um, that would be from August 3rd to August 13th, 2022. And they would also close the sidewalk along the east side. Um, and then Renaissance is also requesting the full closure. I, that is, sorry, on North Dunn, it would be the sidewalk on the west side. And then Renaissance is close, requesting the full street closure on North Grant from 7th to the east-west alley to the south, and that would be the sidewalk closure adjacent to the site also, and that would be from August 29th to September 9th, 2022. And then they're also requesting the full alley closure of the alley just south of their site, and that would be from August 3rd to September 9th, 2022, and there are, they are working closely with that property owner um, that's the private property south of the alley. And then all these closures are requested to ensure the public safety during their demolition activities. And they'll have a six foot construction fence surrounding the site. And we've reviewed the request and be happy to answer any questions. Yes, it will. It will be fully around it. And then the private property owner, um, is their only entrance off of, it seems like they may have an entrance off of both the alley and Grant, if I remember. I think there access is only off of the alley, and I know that's what IU and mm -hmm. Renaissance has been coordinating. Um, if Chad or Steve would like to comment to that, um, or the IU reps, but I know they've been coordinating closely with, with that property owner for access. I realized my microphone was off, so they probably <laughs> couldn't hear my question. Um, so my question was, uh, 
to the coordinators of the project, um, if the private property owner has access both from the alleyway and Grant Street, and is that what is being sort of navigated is making sure that they maintain access or is it a situation where the, the property owner is not going to have access to their parking and there are other arrangements being made for the property owner? Uh, Madam President, this is uh, Sean Floyd, I'm the project manager for uh, Renaissance Inc. on this project. Uh, we have been working with the owner and uh, along with IU uh, to provide them additional parking spaces um, at their request uh, so that uh, we, we realize the, uh, the difficulty that we're uh, presenting with them. Um, so we're gonna try to limit it as, as shortly as possible. And with that uh, uh, alley closure, um, it's only gonna be, except for when we're working right in that area, it will be a partial closure so they can still get into their parking lot. Okay, thank you. Um, we, at, at a certain point where we have the building with its height, uh, there is a fear of, of parts of it coming down across a fence. Uh, so that's where we're wanting extra precaution and we are working with them uh, to create them parking spots. Okay, great, thank you. Is there any public comment on this item? I see none, I'll say. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the street closure request from Renison Inc. on North Dunn Street and North Grant Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next up is contract with PEI maintenance for fuel tank inspections. Uh, Adam Wason on behalf of Jason Spear, our fleet maintenance uh, manager. Um, this is a contract request for approval to uh, contract with PEI for uh, fuel tank inspection. So we have two fueling locations for city vehicles, one on Adams Street, one on South Henderson Street. Uh, this, puts, uh, this puts us in contract with this uh, company to perform those inspection services, uh, submit our, our Indiana Department of Environmental Management forms, and um, just using a professional service for this uh, going forward. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions on this item? Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with PEI maintenance for fuel tank inspections. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up is staff reports and other business. Uh, Adam Wason again, Public Works Director. Just wanted to make note, um, the city uh, put out a news release, uh, I think just a couple days ago, uh, regarding um, um, our effort, we bamboo has been a hot topic here at the Board of Public Works, and so I uh, was pleased to read that both uh, HAND and other city staff are gonna um, be attempting to work with residents that are um, identified as having those um, bamboo groves um, and how they might be able to work together on eradication and what resources may be out there. So I uh, was really pleased to hear that, knowing the attention that had gotten. Um, I, I would be remiss not to make mention that we had a real successful couple weeks at the animal shelter since uh, uh, we kind of put the call out to the public that we were really busy and at capacity. Uh, and then one final thing, I want to send a huge shout out to a retired city staff member, um, Ron Payton at our street department, uh, retired last week after I think somewhere over 15 years of service with the street department, but uh, Ron was the type of guy that you, um, if something needed to be done, Ron would always just uh, ask how quickly you needed it done and want to send a big congratulations to Ron for his retirement. Uh, he certainly will be missed down at the street department, not only for his work ethic, but also that great sense of humor he has. So uh, happy, uh, best of wishes into your retirement, Ron. So that's all I have today. All right, thank you. Next up is approval of claims. Um, are there any questions from the board on claims? No. Uh, my only question was about the um, two, it looks like $2 reimbursements for parking permits. 
Yes. There... So we had sub so um, as part of the 2022 budget hearings with the city council, we were asked to try to implement a pilot cash out parking program here at the city. Um, we. Um, <laughs> It took us some time to actually come up with the parameters of that and issue that to issue that program out to employees this summer. Um, in the meantime, we had some city staff members right at the beginning of the year jump onto the parking permit portal and order their new permits. So as part of the new um, parking cash out pilot program, we needed to do some reimbursements. So okay. that's what those are. So there are different permits now available. Yeah. That they so, had to be um, so exchanged. basically, we have a parking cash out program, uh, an incentive for staff members that don't uh, choose to drive a single occupancy vehicle to work, um, and that was released through um, to staff just a couple weeks ago. So we're working through uh, kind of the logistics on getting that all implemented. Okay. But otherwise, um, this was something I hadn't considered staff pay for their parking permit here if they have there was a two dollar annual fee in the past okay all right so in order for them to have the the permit that allows them to park in the lot they paid basically for the administrative fee for the permit Correct. yes to be under the new printed. program with the parking cash out that went away okay so they're yes all right that makes that makes sense to me all right uh, any public comment on claims Seeing none, is there a motion on claims? Move that we approve claims in the amount of $1,437,965.89. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And if there is no other business, I will call for adjournment.